Right guys, today we're gonna work with some cake. I'm not baking today, we've got the, the cakes pre-made so that you're not watching me for hours and hours. Also, I, I'm actually not a big fan of baking. Victor does the baking. Um, so we're just gonna decorate the cake and I'm gonna show you something that doesn't take very long. It's really easy, but it looks really nice and it's great for kids' parties and things. Not that you'll be doing any parties anytime soon. But if you do have kids with birthdays or you just wanna practice, you can still have a go at this. Um, so I've got just a small cake here. So I think Richard's gonna show you from above now so you guys can see what I'm doing. Um, this one, I can't remember actually the size of it, was it? What size cake did we do? Can you remember? <laughs> Maybe it's five inches, hang on. Wait, I've got inches marked on the side of my board. I oh, know I haven't got inches marked on the side of my board. I think it's six or seven. I think it's six inches. No, it's a six inch cake. I'm sure it is a six inch cake, this one. Um, yeah, and this is just a smaller one that I've cut. We might cut the smaller one down still, but I don't know. Yeah, it's slightly smaller than six, so it would have been a six inch to begin with, yeah. Okay, so I've just cut it in half. It's not a very big cake. Um, it's pointless me making massive cakes at the moment because I don't have many people really about to eat them. So, also it's quicker if I do something small for the Facebook Lives as well. Less wasteful. I don't like too much waste. Um, so first of all, what so I'm going to do is stick it to my body. Just, it's only just gone half past. Yeah, sorry. Say hello to everybody again. It's just gone half past. Oh, now. did you put me online early? A couple of minutes. You're supposed to put me on bang on time. Hi everyone. <laughs> Richard's put me on early. I didn't realise he put me on early, so I've been chattering away already. Um, thanks for joining us today. We're going to be making a cake. Well, we're not making a cake. We're decorating a cake. And we're going to do it like a little dog face. I've got a fairly big cake drum. Um, it is a cake drum I've used before. That's why it looks like it's seen better days, but I've given it a wipe down. I don't like wasting because it's only for me. This will be all right. We've got a six-inch cake. And we're just going to put some frosting or buttercream just down on here to stick it. Now... Ideally, use a new board if it's for anyone. And then what I'm going to do is just sandwich some filling in between. And I'm using similar colours to what I used last time. So we're going to use all fondant. Oh, sorry, last Facebook Live. I mean the last Facebook Live that I did. So we did um, sloths last time. I don't know how many of you guys saw them last time, but we did do sloths. Um, but they were cookies, but we used like different browns and stuff. So hang on one second, let me just put a bit more in this. I'm not worried about going to the edges because I know I'm going to cut those edges off. Oh, it's almost to the edges anyway. Okay, let's put that on there. Um, I don't know how well you guys can see the colors in the shot. Can you guys see them? Yeah. Just about. Um, I'm going to need black. On this one, I've actually used the dark brown and the sort of paler brown. brown the, yeah, dark brown and teddy bear brown. I've mixed those together for my main kind of colour on it. The black we're going to need. I will tell you in a minute. I can't remember. There is one that's actually flavoured like caramel. I'm going to need some white. Um, you completely put me off track, Richard, with what I'm doing. Okay, so this smaller one, I'm going to just hold it against this to see if I want it as big as that because it's pretty big. I don't think I'm going to want it quite as big. Um, I'm just going to, just to make it a bit smaller, I only want to go a tiny bit smaller. It's not going to make a big difference, is it? That will maybe go next size down. Just going to use some cookie cutters. Let's go this size. It's the easiest way for me to cut a circle. Yeah, the cookie cutters do come in really handy, don't they? Mate? Yeah, I use them for all sorts of stuff. You guys that have been watching these Facebook Lives will know I've been using them a lot. Let's just move that out of the way. Um, now I think I might actually cut a little bit just off the bottom of it. Just to straighten out that bottom bit there. And we're going to put it on there. The reason I've stuck my cake really far to one side is that I actually have another cake that I was practicing with earlier. So I'm hoping to squeeze that on at the other side. Hoping to. We'll see if I've actually left enough space for it to go there. Okay, so I'm going to put some frosting under there. Like so. Can you and tell gonna... which part of the cake this is going to be? This is its nose. Did I tell you what I was making already? I forgot. I don't know if you have said that. Did I, did I tell you guys what I was making? I think, did I just say face cake? Yeah. It's not a person. It's not a person's face in case you were thinking this is the oddest looking person. It's going to be a dog. Um, I don't want it quite as rounded. So we're making a dog. We're making a dog face cake. It depends what kind of <laughs> shape you want as to whether you leave it quite rounded. I want it to be a little bit narrower. So I'm going to cut a little bit off. And I'll probably be eating those off cuts later. I'm supposed to be healthy eating at the moment not really happening. Richard doesn't help when he buys me several Easter eggs because I just eat them all. Just to keep you happy. Uh, 
They do for five minutes while I'm eating them. <laughs> and then I get upset after I've eaten them that I'm going to be getting fat. Right, okay, that's on there. I've narrowed it down. So again, it looks a bit weird at the moment. If you're wondering why it looks quite firm, because it is quite firm, we put it in the freezer for a little bit before doing the video because sometimes when I'm adding buttercream and, and things and cutting, they can crumble quite a bit. So it's just easier if it's a little bit firmer. So it's not fully frozen. And what I'm going to do is just, I'm cutting in some little dips for my eye sockets. I'm not too worried about them being a perfect shape, but can you see just so it dips a little bit? You can, obviously make sure you've got clean hands. You can even press it down as well. If you don't like to cut, if you find it's crumbling, just give it a little push. Same for my nose, I can, can you see? I can just push it so I don't have to do too much shaping with the knife. You will end up covered in cake crumbs and things, but that's fine. Okay, so I've not done too much shaping. I want to keep it fairly simple. And what I'm gonna do now is try and cover it in a layer of frosting. So you can use um, ganache if you prefer. Quite often I use ganache. I haven't made any today. Uh, I had some of this already in this frosting, so I thought I'd use it. I'll be honest, I didn't make the frosting. That's why it's so white, because I know someone's gonna say, how did you get your buttercream so white? Um, this is one we bought to try a while ago, isn't it, Richard? And we never really used it. So I thought, oh, we'll use it. Um, I think buttercream's nicer. I mean, it's easy to work with it, but I think buttercream actually might taste nicer. Probably, who shall I give this one to? My dad. Or the next door neighbors. I could give it to the next door neighbors. <laughs> Someone just pointed out that in the Facebook Live tag, I just say we're making a dog. Oh, does it? Oh, there we go. <laughs> Richard sets up these titles for me, so I don't even know what this is. It's a good job I didn't change my mind then, Richard, and mix something else. It is a good job. Okay, so I'm doing a very non-neat covering with the frosting. Uh, the good thing about, you know, if you're using like buttercream or frosting, because it's not going to set really hard like the ganache would, if I don't get it perfectly neat, it's not the end of the world because I can kind of squish it a little bit under the fondant to smooth it out. Whereas when I use the ganache, which is usually my first choice, um, once it's set, it's set hard. So if I've ganached and I've got all these lumps and bumps sticking out, they'll kind of stick out through the fondant. So I'm just trying to go around the edges as well. Oops, I should really take that to the bottom. I don't know if you guys can see this or not. Can they see it, Richard? Yeah, I can do that. So do you, you tend to use when you're doing your, like these sorts of cakes, slightly like frozen cakes, don't you? Yeah, it just makes it easier to cut them. Not always, but sometimes they have found that they just crumble so much for me when I'm uh, doing them and they're not partially frozen, especially if it's a more complicated design. Sometimes they cut okay, but then when I'm adding like the buttercream and stuff, they just start crumbling everywhere. So it's just a, that little bit easier for me if they're uh, partially frozen. They don't have to be fully frozen. The downside though of it being partially frozen is like when I'm doing it now, it's gonna be defrosting as I'm putting the fondant on which means it's gonna be getting condensation forming on it. So when it looks like it's kind of sweating, that's the condensation that's forming on it. So it, if I don't work fairly quickly with it, the fondant can get sticky. So if you're doing this with a partially frozen one, what you would do at home is you'd do this covering and then you could let it sit for like an hour or so once you've got your either ganache on or your buttercream. See, it wants to so crumble already. Your big board is. Oh, I don't know. This is, is it 13 inch? Yeah. And it's only tiny cakes that we're putting on it, but you'd be surprised how much space they take up, especially when it's got ears. Okay, it's not a very neat job at all, is it, with the frosting? And you can use, like, if you've got time to give it sort of 10 minutes to firm up, you can use, like, um, cake cloths and things on it, which give it a nice smooth finish. I'm not going to worry about that today. So I'm just going to move these fondants to one side a second. So I've got a bit more space here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover this in my base color. So for the base color, I think I'm going to use, like I'm going to use a mix of these two colors together. I have pre-mixed it, so you don't have to watch me mix in for ages. Ta-da! It's actually not that much darker, is it? I didn't want it to go too dark because I still want to see a difference between those two colors because I think I'll give it that color ears. Okay, let's move it to one side. Now, just watch that. Once you've done this part, you can leave it a little bit, but also you want to have a bit of a tidy of your workspace, otherwise you'll end up with um, cake crumbs and everything. 
Obviously, I haven't really had much of a tidy since just doing that, so you so might find I get some you, crumbs. If you use your cakes just from the fridge, will that be the same as using it? Um, I prefer them slightly colder than just the We've fridge. We've always found using fridges dries your cakes out. If, if I leave it in, yeah, if I leave it in the fridge for too long, sometimes I find it dries the sponge a little bit. Um, but yeah, I know when we did the Daniel Diego's class, we had them in the fridge, didn't we? And it did actually keep his cakes a bit firmer. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you could try it like that. I think I think it would still work. For me, I just like them just that little bit firmer, so it's not partially Somebody's frozen. Asked, uh, Tamara's asked, how many servings would we get from this cake? With Zoe, you'd probably get one. <laughs> no, that would last me a couple of sessions. <laughs> <laughs> it, dep it really depends. I, I, would, I would say maybe this kind of size might be all right for just at home if there's just a small family of you I mean, where you're not having a party then I think it would be all right. We're only doing small cakes today for the purpose of the Facebook Live so obviously if you're at home you can scale them up to make them a bit more yeah. of a bigger size. It's so difficult to judge portion size but it's not a very deep cake so I don't know if you guys can see from the side it's really a very shallow cake so even if you had a big piece you probably wouldn't be having that much because it's not deep whereas if i was doing like a six inch cake that was like i don't know say like a chocolate drip cake it would be really tall like sort of six seven inches in height so you're gonna get a lot more cake whereas this it, it i don't know you might feed four or five people out of it would you say yeah. as it's long okay. as they're not greedy it's people okay yeah it's okay for at home so i could go a little bit thinner than this but i think i'm gonna leave it as it is it's plenty big enough is this i need to make sure that it's big enough that it would cover the cake and wrap around the sides. So it's not too deep, isn't this one? So I don't need too much extra that's gonna wrap around the sides. But what I am gonna do is cut like a little circle out here so that the nose will fit in place. So if I go up here and cut a little circle, I'm not worried about it being the exact size because I can kind of stretch it a bit. Although I'm thinking I should have probably left a bit more paste down here now. <laughs> now looking at that, I'm gonna roll that a little bit deeper here. Let's just recut that. Let's see. Okay, so let's move this back, back in. Thank you. So I'm gonna try and drape this over here so it goes around the nose like that. Oops, okay. good job I got my pinny on. I can just wipe everything down my apron. And then I'm just gonna kind of wrap it under. I don't know if you guys can really see that there. We've wrapped it under there. I'll probably cut a little bit off where it, where it overlaps. Oh, buttercream and everything. If you've given this a bit of time to firm up, you're not gonna be as likely to get buttercream everywhere. That's actually one of the advantages of the ganache rather than buttercream is that once it is hard, it doesn't go on everything. Whereas the buttercream is nice, it's soft. So you can see I can kind of smooth that under the fondant, but it's very messy. So it sometimes kind of squeezes out of what I'm doing. And of course you can put it in the fridge at this stage, you know, to set the buttercream harder if you want. Oops, got a little crease under his chin, but I think it should be okay. I'm going to give him some paws kind of under the face, so that little crease that I've just got under the chin should cover, should cover up, so that's fine. So I'm pressing in with my finger around the bottom edge to push it in as tight as I can to the base of the cake, otherwise I end up with like a bit of a gap and some cake showing through. And then what we're going to do is we're going to cut all the way around the edge. Just cut this bit off. Keep hold of your leftover fondant. It might come in handy for other bits and pieces. Maybe we'll do his paws in that colour. I can't decide. I'm saying he, it might even be a she. I considered doing a little French bulldog, but I realised I already have a French bulldog video, don't I, on uh, YouTube? Yeah, do you know, I could look like another Wookiee. <laughs> yeah, it could actually. They all look like they all look the same by the time I finish them, don't they? <laughs> okay. So that's our main base. So I think we'll go for a bit of the white now, up the middle of the face and then on the nose. Richard, you've got my white over there with you. Please can you pass me the white? Thank you. Just cutting off some white. Do you add tylos to your fondant? No, not for this kind of thing. No. Um, maybe if there was something big that was sticking out off it, that I might add some tylos where it needed some extra support. But because it's a very basic shape and there's nothing really that's holding a complicated shape, it should be okay as it is this. Okay, I'm going to take a bit of white. Oops. 
and we're going to roll it out and obviously you guys can have a bit of a bigger workspace than what I'm working on so if I take up too much space you'll struggle to see it I think in this camera shot okay I don't need it quite as long I want to cut a, just a strip that's going to come down the center of the nose now because it's been frozen and this will start to feel a bit tacky as it defrosts um, I shouldn't really need to add um, glue or water or anything to it to stick it so it should be all right let's see Oop, thanks push that in shot for you all can you all see I'm going to start it's ever so slightly bit wider here did you not set up the light in properly today, Richard? Okay, so we're going to put it on the top of the head. Oops. Where it meets the board, we're just going to trim it. And maybe just give it a little press on the edges so it doesn't stand out too much from the rest of the cake. Okay, and then this bit here can just be cut off. And then we'll ice the nose separately. Just put that bit to one side that's got the buttercream on or the frosting on because it'll get very messy all that bit I think that bit's not going on okay so nice and simple not too much to it so far okay let's do it a bit more need so always knead your fondant before you start using it if you haven't kneaded it enough it will look like it's cracking it shouldn't take too long to knead fondant though also if you need it too much it sometimes cracks so that's why I tend to use the fondant, you know, pre-coloured, because what I find is if I'm colouring it myself, which you can do, and it does it does take colour, but especially if I'm going for something really dark in colour, it, I spend so long kneading it and mixing the colour in that actually I've zapped everything out of the uh, fondant and it's just dry and cracky, so that's why I prefer to just use it ready coloured. Also, it's far less messy for me as well if it's pre-coloured. Okay, I want it kind of rounded at the top edge. If it's not the right shape, we can always cut it though, so that's fine. I'm gonna place it over the nose. Just rub that buttercream off me again. And try and pull it around the sides here, like this. Now I might get a little bit of creasing on the underneath, so I'm just gonna carefully try and pull this out. Okay, and then I'm going to cut a little bit off just down here. It doesn't have to touch the board this bit. Oh, I didn't quite cut through enough. Press firm enough that you know it's gone through the white. Oh God, no, don't get a shot of it from underneath, Richard. <laughs> it's, it is all. You can show people what it looks like underneath. It's very, um, it's very creased underneath at the moment. So I don't really want too much creasing in here, this bit, but this bit here we're going to be covering up so that I'm not worried about okay it's got big nose this one but that's fine big nose it's fine um uh, Caroline's asked do you use checked at all when you or do you find that you don't need it with this type of fondant um I haven't needed it with this one um so we're using the Renshaws I think this one is this one the Renshaws Extra yeah. and the Renshaws Extra is actually nicer than the Renshaws but it only comes in some colors it's fairly firm I, I don't usually need the treks too much because it's pre-colored it shouldn't dry out in that i shouldn't need to be adding the shortening do you know when i used to use stuff though i used to add so much shortening to everything all the time but i don't know if it's just that i wasn't used to using it or that i was overworking it and i was always adding like bucket loads of shortening to stuff also to stop it sticking as well um if it does dry out then you can add shortening to it or even keep like a just a thin layer of shortening on your hands for it as well um but yeah i, I find because of the mats I use, they're generally quite non-stick, so my fondant's not sticking as well. So I'm not adding like icing sugar or corn flour, which then means this isn't drying out, meaning I don't need the shortening as much, if that makes sense. Okay, let's put a line up the middle of the nose. So I'm just going to use the Dresden tool to just press up the middle there like that. Yeah, it's fairly deep. Got cake crumbs on my fingers. Just running over it a little bit with my finger. Does that look more? It looks like a bum. Okay. If I put a nose on it, it'll look less like a bum. Let's put a nose on. It's probably not ready for the nose stage yet, but I feel like it makes such a big difference when you put a nose on. 
So I've just got some black that I'd already opened. So this one, the black is, ex is um, Renshaw's Extra. It's just a bit firmer because sometimes black fondant can be very, very soft because of the amount of food colouring that's in it. Um, even the black extra is quite soft, but this one's firmer than if I use the normal one. But I like it. I like this stuff. Let's see. How big should we go? I'm going to go oval shaped. Oh, yeah. I like a nice big nose. Yeah, so that makes it look more normal. Though. It looks more like a dog straight away, doesn't it, with that bit? If it doesn't stick, you can just stick a bit of water under it or even... Um, some edible glue. It's starting to remind me of one of the uh, cartoon characters that was a dopey looking dog. Oh, um, I forgot what it's called. Yeah. I if anybody knows the dog that I mean, you may recognise it's like a dopey looking dog. I'm going to give him a highlight on his nose. It's Shows my age if I remember this cartoon, but... Oh, there's a couple that I'm thinking of. Was he with um, Yogi Bear? Yeah. And the crew? So I've put a long like, little white carrot shape and a little white dot just to give him a bit of shine there on his nose. Also, it looks like he's got a bit of shine. Um, I'm just going to maybe enhance his cheeks a little bit more, so I'm just going to press in. It's crazy how just having the nose has changed it so much. Yeah, it does. He looks really different now, doesn't he? Uh, I'm just going to press in a little bit more this eye area. I think the white might not be quite central. Either that or my eyes <laughs> are not quite even. Oops. I don't want to push his face yeah, up too much. It's not quite then. central when you look down. Yeah, it's not central. Right. It's fine. What colour eyes? Oh, deputy, deputy door. There you go. Is that what it's called? Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> That's a lady called Pam that helped us there. Thanks, Pam. Right, I'm thinking I might go for little white bits over the eyes. Mm, in fact, actually, I'm going to roll this out and I'm going to cut some circles and then I'll probably change this circle, circle shape, but I need a circle to start with to help me. So, let's see if this is big enough to cut two little circles from. I'm going to go for my smallest cookie cutter. Cut out two circles. Okay, then now we've got the two circles. These aren't actually the eyes. These are supposed to be the patches that go kind of around his eyes, but I'm going to change the shape of them slightly, even though we start with that circle. You see, I'm going to pull it out a little bit so it's kind of teardrop-ish. It looks like, do you remember Sad Sam? Was it Sad Sam? I had a teddy bear called Sad Sam. Like the hush puppy dog. Um, it's gone over my head that one. Sad Sam, and it was really cutesy, sad looking little dog. I think that's what it was called, that's what I used to call it, Sad Sam. Right, okay. Um, should we do closed eyes or open eyes? I'm going to put him eye, an eye in either side or an eye hole with my balling tool. Let's go oval rather than round. I think I'm going to give him open eyes on this one. So there's our little eye socket. So I want some white again to fill it in. So I want to try and now roll a ball that's the same size, it's a bit big, as the eye socket that I've just created. Just want a little bit more for the other eye. Do I keep putting my head in front of the camera? I realise my frizzy bits of hair kind of poke out in front of the camera <laughs> quite often. Right, you're okay. Okay. You've been asked just Let's to remind again. us, um, what size cakes have you used for this one? Uh, this one was six inch. And the little one, it could cut it. Was, ooh. Was it the this, this size? It, it wasn't the biggest one, it was the next the one down. Size. Yeah, it was like the second size down in my set. So that's three inches. So basically six inch and a three inch cake. Yeah. There we go, so we've filled those eye sockets now. And let's Do use some black. Up, Sam? Do they see? I didn't make him up. Richard quite often thinks that I make up, things up and that I remember things that didn't happen. Yeah, you're things. To do things. <laughs> Whatever. I've probably still got my sad Sam teddy somewhere. Somebody, uh, Matthew has asked, can you tell us a bit about our company and how you got started or we got started? Yeah, well, so at first it was just me. Obviously, it's not just me now. There's like me, my brother and Richard. Um, and we have Emily as well working. Yeah, on. Emily, who's Richard's sister, now helps. My mum usually helps... Um, other people are currently furloughed. Is that what you, what you call it? Yeah, we'll help you. So there's not all of us at the moment. Um, but usually, that's who's here. So we've just put an oval of black in each eye. Um, I started really as a hobby, didn't I? That, it was pure bad. Richard's mum asked if I'd decorate it a was cake. was accident that you started. Well, I don't know. Richard's mum asked if I'd decorate a cake that she'd made. 
um, and I did and I took two days off work to decorate didn't I? I spent two whole days if you'd have seen it it's the ugliest thing I've ever made but at the time I really liked it it was a church choir master two small white balls we're just gonna stick them in each eye um, church choir master wasn't it sat at a church organ and I could not work out how you did church organ pipes in icing so I made them out of cardboard <laughs> tubes <laughs> that rolled up and painted gold and I didn't know that you got modeling paste and stuff either so mine was made out of like marzipan wasn't yeah. it have you got that can I have that green please Richard I'm gonna at this stage I think what I'm gonna do is ice the board in fact I'm gonna let Richard knead that for me I'm gonna give it some eyebrows actually I'm gonna give him some little eyebrows some sad eyebrows while Richard's kneading that um, yeah, and I did that, and Richard's mum said, would I decorate her another one, this time for his sister? So again, I did that, and then um, I, I really enjoyed doing it, and I thought, oh, it cost me quite a lot of stuff for the equipment, or at the time I thought it cost me a lot, it probably didn't cost that much compared to what I spend on things now, um, but I thought, oh, I've spent a fortune on that, I need to really keep decorating things just to use the stuff that I had, so I was getting my, my money's worth, um, but I did, I did enjoy it, and then the ladies at work, you're not getting very far with ice, uh, deck, needing that green, Richard. Um, yeah, the ladies that I worked with um, kept saying, oh, we really like what you've done. Can you decorate cakes for us? So they would bake a cake and bring it to work. I'd take the cake home, decorate it, bring it back. I'd spend like two days or longer, wouldn't I, making things to go on the top and then I'd charge them like £10 for decorating it <laughs> when it spent so long on it. Um, you got, sorry. But yeah, so that's, that's how it started anyway. I just started doing it for people at work for like a hobby. And then people that I didn't know started asking and I thought I'll set up as a business. And at first it was kind of, it was a part-time business. Richard's nodding at me. I don't know why he doesn't want me to tell you. But <laughs> I have no idea. Is it sometimes rather than saying stuff, Richard tries to signal things in the background and I have no idea what he's doing. I'll say this pace ready for you. Oh wait, thank you. So yeah, I started it as a part-time business. So I'd do that on my evenings and weekends. And then, um, yeah, the more I did it, the more it made me dislike my job though, because I really enjoyed doing the cakes. Mm, I haven't got enough there to cover the board, Richard. Please can you do me some more? So. You can ice your boards in advance. Okay, I'm gonna give that back to Richard to need. I'm gonna make him some ears and feet while Richard's doing that. So. Ears, we'll make them and then we can take them back off. It's just, it's easier for me to cover the board and then put the other pieces on afterwards. So let's see if this is gonna be big enough for my ear. This is the bit that takes up a lot of the fondant though, so you probably wouldn't wanna eat the ears. Or at least I wouldn't want to anyway. So I'm going to roll like a giant kind of, oh, got some cracks in it. I should have needed this longer. Like a giant sort of carrot-ish shape, what'd you say? Flattening it slightly. And it's going to come down the head. Oh, look, you can see the cracks where I haven't needed it properly. Let's see if we can rub those out a little bit. No. And it's going to come down here and it's going to come out to the side. So I'm going to put his feet here so it kind of looks like well, he's not going to look like he's sleeping because his eyes are open, but it looks like he's laying down. And then we'll do the ears coming out to the side. Ah, Richard's brought me some green. Uh, I don't know. We'll see. If it's not enough, I can do it in pieces. It's fine. We can try and do it in more than one piece. So I'm just going to move that to one side a second while I try and roll this out. Now, ideally, you want a bigger rolling pin when you're doing this. Um, now, to be honest, in my workspace, I haven't actually got a big enough space here to physically put a big rolling pin but you guys at home will find it easier with a bigger pin, rolling pin somebody somebody has asked am I, am I, am I the baker um so when i first started my sister actually used to bake for me i have done baking though um i don't avoid it completely well i try um, now at first um obviously at first when i was doing them for people i was just decorating cakes that they'd baked then when people that I didn't know started asking, um, my sister was baking. My sister loves baking. She's got like, so many like little competition wins, hasn't she, from her baking? And um, she she used to bake a lot for me. And then I'd decorate. Um, and then she got a boyfriend. 
and <laughs> I had better things to do than, than bake for me all the time. So then I had to start baking myself. Um, but luckily she left me all her recipes and that's what <laughs> my sister's recipes that we always use for things. Um, and then I just got really busy with the cakes that I, I was struggling to get them them all fit in in a week, wouldn't I? They, I just, I was up, well, you guys will all know, you'll be the same. I was up all night, every night, sort of baking, decorating, trying to get on top of admin and things. And then Richard was helping me with the admin, weren't you, at that point? He was trying to help me because I was just so behind with things. Um, and then you we're gradually really started helping with baking, didn't you? Yeah, we're always behind with admin anyway. Yeah, that hasn't changed. We're still always behind with admin. It's no matter how much we do with the admin, we can never get on top of it, can we? Okay, so I'm going to try and kind of fill the bulk of the space. I'm going to cut out a little bit here. I don't know if I've got this in shot for you guys or not. Yeah, it's just in shot. So we'll cut out a little bit here. In fact, let's cut that into this bit. Okay, and then we'll place it around here. Now this bit might... Now, I should have really put some water on the board to stick it. And I forgot to get myself a pot of water for this job, but it's fine. Oops. So I'm going to pull it around here. I've actually... When I was practicing, I actually made another little dog's head, which is going to go here. So I probably didn't need to cover all that bit there, but it's fine. Then let's see if I can bring this around here a little bit. I'm going to crease it there just to pull it around. So we have to manipulate it a bit. Can you see to get it Oops, around? Just got a little crack there. Let's rub that down with my hand. And we'll bring it around here. Again, if I can seal it here, then hopefully like the paw or the ear might cover that. I'll give it a bit of a rub down anyway so that hopefully you can't tell too much. Now let's see if we can move this kind of crease so that it comes a bit further up because then I think I should be able to get the other dog's head to cover this. Let's just cut this off here. Oops. Just rub it down. Like I say, I'm not terribly worried about the bits that I think are going to be covered. Hopefully they're going to be covered now I've said that. And of course you can use a cake smoother. It's probably better to use a cake smoother. <laughs> but like sort of the fattier bits of my hands rub the creases out quite well. Then I can cut around the edge of my board. So just carefully going around the edge. Just make sure you're cleaning off the knife blade as well because once you get fondant stuck all over the knife, it starts tearing rather than cutting. So usually I just give it a little wipe on my off cuts. Again, just wiping that as we're taking it around. There we go. I think I've rolled it a little bit thicker in some parts than others. Now you can spend much longer getting it thinner as well because I've, I've put this on fairly thick, which is a bit wasteful really of me with the fondant. So if you can spend a bit of time getting it thinner, then that's going to be better. Okay. And what I should have really done was I was going to just a bit of colour onto him. I should have really done that in advance of icing the board because my colour drops on everything. Let's stick this on this side. Although I don't think my other dog's head's going to fit in, is it? So he's got big, big ear. I should have really spent much longer um, getting rid of the creases and things out of this. Yeah, I don't know where my other dog's going to go. <laughs> His ears are too big. Okay, let's do the same with the other one. He's also going to need some paws. Richard, could you cut me off some more white, please, for the paws? Okay, I'm just kneading this a little bit. See if we can get rid of some of the cracks and creases. If you've got warmer hands, the cracks and creases disappear much easier. I'm quite cold at the moment. So I always find that it's just much harder to get rid of those creases and cracks. If you can give them a firm press together, they start disappearing. Okay, so let's roll that long teardrop or carrot shape. Okay, I want to make sure it's a similar length to the other one. Could actually just use the rolling pin, can I, rather than flatten it with my hands. I just don't want to flatten it too much that I stretch it too long. Okay, and then let's place it on this side. 
So it'll come out just slightly beyond my board, but that's fine. I feel like I should have started it slightly lower on the head. The good thing is if you don't use water, you can play around and move it if it's not in a place that you like. Okay, so white, let's use a bit more white now. Give him some big chunky paws. So these are the bits that take up all the fondant, so. You could go much smaller, like if you want a different type of dog with like shorter ears or sticky up ears, then you're gonna be using a lot less fondant than this. So let's see for the paws. Again, I'm going to have to use quite a bit of fondant so you can see them really. So I'm going to push them on here. What were you going to say, Richard? I said you could put, a bit of, could put a bit of cake in that in the paws, couldn't you, as well? Yeah, you could actually. Yeah, you could do little mini cakes for the paws. If you've got more time. If you've got a bit more time, yeah, then that would, that would work really well. Now, I should have really done them both together so that I knew they were going to be the same size. Obviously, that would be too obvious for me to do. I should learn by now to do things together so that I know they're the same size and I never, ever learn. Okay, so let's keep that crease into the bottom of this one so that it doesn't show. Let's see. Squish it so it's a bit more oval. Is that bigger? Or does it look about the same? I can never tell from, a, from the above angle. It always looks different to what it does from my angle. And then we're just pressing the paw lines in with our drizzling tool. Oh, watch you don't catch your fingernails in your board. Does he look all right? Yeah. yeah, I'm fairly happy with him. And then the one I made earlier, I made in about 15 minutes. My one from earlier looks a bit messy now, doesn't it? So I made another one earlier in a different color. This one had closed eyes. Let's see if we can take it off there. Little cake. Oops, there goes his ears. His ears aren't properly stuck on, so it's okay. I'm going to move his ear out of the way. The feet get in the way of each other. Let's see. Oh, covered in buttercream. So maybe I could. Let's cut half his paw off so it kind of fits in. Hopefully. Mm hmm. His ears are so big that they just get in the way, don't they? Right, okay, let's cut a bit of this ear off. Cut it a bit more of an angle so it goes in, hopefully. This one I went for a slightly different colour in my brown. And this one. Oops, I think I stuck the wrong ear on the wrong side. Just smooth that back off. This one's ears aren't actually as long, are they? He looks a little bit younger. Yeah, it's because he's much smaller. He's always going to look younger with him being smaller. So try and give that a good push on in place. Also, can you see I gave him a bit of shading as well. Now, where did I put my other ear? Maybe his ear could come up and over. Does that look silly? Oh, yeah, this way, right, right. There you go, that's it. It's just somewhere to put his ear. <laughs> running, out, <laughs> running out of options for where his ear can go. Yeah, it looks all right over there, doesn't it? Yeah, if you do want to add any shading, um, could you pass me my colours, Richard? And you don't have to add shading. I actually think it looks all right without the shading, doesn't it? This one didn't get eyebrows, but it's fine. Um, you just want some coloured dusts. Now, I think a few of you were asking about these dusts before, and we'd been waiting for ages to get them in stock because they come over from America, but we actually have them in stock now. So anybody that's needing them, we do have them. We don't have very many of them, but we do have them at the moment. Okay, so for shading, I would probably go anywhere that would kind of be shadowed. So let's go for like a, one of the browns. I'm just using a big brush at first. It's quite an orangey brown, isn't it, that I used? You've got a big brown, haven't you? Yeah, that's right. That's all right. Can you see it there? Yeah, that's right. Oh, I forgot to put a piece of black down the nose on that one, down sort of this bit, and I didn't on this one. <laughs> I don't think it needs it though, do you? Yeah, looking good now, it's come to I think it nice looks thing. all right. Yeah, so I'm just using a mix of the browns and maybe even a little bit of the black just to kind of give it a bit of shading. So this is quite a big brush that I'm using at the moment. If I'm gonna go sort of around the eyes or on the paws, I would want to go smaller. So this is all right for kind of large areas. I'll swap to another brush in a second to show you. So these colors are good, but you don't get too much out in one go. So I'll have to keep putting a bit on my brush and going back to them. 
but the good thing is I'm less likely to kind of drop them on everything or sometimes I like the loose powders but what happens is when I'm dusting um, they sometimes drop on what I'm doing it doesn't mean I don't use them and that you can't use them now you'll, you'll see I swap backwards and forwards a lot between these and the the loose dust it's amazing how much a little bit of shading makes it like stand out so much it does makes a big difference doesn't it maybe let's give him some pink <laughs> I'm obsessed with giving things pink cheeks let's go far I don't think you can actually see it it's like a corally kind of color I don't know if it'll show with him having fur on his cheeks brown fur it may not show as well but you can see it a you tiny can bit see it, yeah, it's coming through. just a little bit how much more shading does it use? Let's use a smaller brush to show you guys. A smaller brush. So if I use a darker colour now, and then can you see by using a thinner brush like that, I can get it in the gaps easier. So like between the pores, it will go in much easier. And obviously you can see I'm not spending very much time on this. If you're doing it at home, you can spend a lot longer working on it. And you don't even need this bit. You know, if you don't want to add shading, you don't have to add shading to it. It really is up to you with what you like best. Mm, should I give him any more shading? I quite like this one without too much shading. I should have given him little bags because the sad dogs have like droopy eyes, don't they? I feel like I'm probably going to spoil him with his dark shadows. Oh yeah, no, he's, he needs tufted hair to match the other one. Oops, got a bit of brown in there in that so it might not be a white tuft so little kind of carrot or teardrop shape again no it's not very sticky yeah i'm going to get richard to get me some water and i might be able to stick it without those two i can stick together no problem it's just the sticking it on the on the head so we're just going to add a little bit of water there and then we'll press that on there in place. Then he's got his little pieces of hair to match the other one. There we are. That's it. All finished. Yeah, I suppose I could add some shade into the board, but I think I'm just going to leave it plain as it is. Um, are there any questions you guys want to ask me before I disappear? Today I'm going to be trying to do a bit more work on my book. I'm getting much further with it now. So that's today's plans is to go finish writing this book so that I can get it printed and out there for you guys. But yeah, did anybody else have any questions? That they need yeah. to ask before I disappear. A couple of people have asked regarding the face mold packs. We'll be getting those ready to launch today. Yeah, we're just waiting for a couple of things that we still to arrive. Or did no, they? No, are they have them. they come? Yeah, yeah, so I just need to get that all sorted out. Okay, it was the Ventures modeling chocolate, wasn't it? That we'd not got very much of left. You can't get it anywhere. We've been trying desperately. So in the packs, the face mold packs, I'd put this um, the brown Ventures modeling Belgian modeling chocolate because I really like that for the faces because I like the color as well. Um, and we've barely got any, have we? And we kind of we don't seem to be able to get it from anywhere at the moment. And that was one of the things that was supposed to be going in our pack. So we might have to rethink it and put something else in if we can't get hold of them. Um, but we'll keep all of you updated with that anyway. And then hopefully they'll be out soon to you all. Um, any other questions? Uh, if you people, if everybody that's wondering about equipment and materials used today, there should be a comment pinned at the top of the Oh comments. yeah, Emily's put links, I think, to everything that we've used today in the top for you. Would she have linked these as well? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep, so the colour palettes will be linked on there as well. So the colour palettes, they're not a cheap item, um, but mine have lasted years, haven't they? Apart yeah, from the ones that I dropped on the floor. Yeah, I mean, you've had them four, five, six years, some of yours. Yeah. So they have lasted a long time. And I only have the second set because I dropped the first set on the floor and yeah. they smashed everywhere when I dropped them. Yes. I, I do that with a lot of things <laughs> I'm quite clumsy um, but yeah so they're not a cheap buy but they do last a long time and they are edible ones as well yeah what we could do with we could do with a bit of help from all you guys that are watching us as well some comments on what you think for next Tuesdays because uh, we'll do a little bit of a recce on easy stuff easy stuff <laughs> give me something easy to do <laughs> like I said we like to keep the Facebook lives to a like half an hour to 45 minutes tops. how long have I been today? Uh, 45 minutes wow so that's was it 45 bad. minutes? I didn't realise it was that long yeah yeah Ah, so, never mind. Not been too bad though. You got a good cake. Yeah, but I did do one in advance. I think this one turned out better than that one. But I did literally do that in fifteen minutes, and I had to have a quick practice. And it's like to say to everybody, like you say, it's good to you always practice the one, don't you? Because it makes the next one better. Mm -hmm. So 
Although a lot of our YouTube videos is the first time we do something you see on YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> right, anyway, guys, thank you ever so much for watching. Oh, and what? There'll be a YouTube video going on today at 3 o'clock. Oh, yes. I forgot about that. So, ages ago, I did. I don't know if you guys can yeah, see yeah, me. Um, I did a YouTube video with Rob, uh, Rob Baker. I don't know how many of you guys know him. It's Mr. Baker's Cakes, and he runs like a really good um, cake decorating blog, doesn't he? And he keeps everybody up to date with what's on trend and all the latest products and things. And then he also does a lot of baking himself and cake decorating. So he's got his own YouTube channel too. And he was over helping me a bit with the book. And while he was over, um, we did a YouTube video together. And is it on at the moment or is it it's later? Going on at three o'clock today. So it's going on at three o'clock today on our YouTube channel. Um, so basically we had, was it one hour? Richard says a challenge of one hour to decorate some cakes. And basically uh, Richard pulled out the freezer, all the spare ones that I've never done anything with. So when I've got spare cakes, I just shove them in the freezer and I use them for YouTube videos. Um, and he selected, it was a bit like, is it Ready Steady Cook? Ready Steady Bake. Oh, ready Steady Bake. And Richard... Uh, no, ready Steady Cake, we didn't bake. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> um, anyway, Richard selected all the equipment and stuff, all the um, paste. So Richard had found us some fondant and basically gave us what he wanted. <laughs> Which gave us limited things we could make with it. Um, and me and Rob had one hour each to decorate a, ke a cake each. And it was kind of like a competition, wasn't it, for who had the best one. But yes, yeah, so that'll be going on at three o'clock yeah. today. So I don't want to tell you what we make because you need to watch it to see what what we end up with. And it's one of the first videos where you see actually Zoe in the video. Because you'll be having... having it now. Well, yeah, no video. It's normally hours. It's because nobody wants to see these big bags in videos. <laughs> right, guys, anyway, we're going to get off. Thank you ever so much for wait, watching wait, again. Wait. Oh, wait, what? Ask what the YouTube channel's called. It's called Zoe's Fancy Cakes. <laughs>